<clears throat> okay, so uh, uh, hello everyone. Uh, so we are live, we are global at several platform uh, at Facebook, uh, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. And we are talking about the, this uh, monthly monetization and uh, potentials of e-commerce. So, uh, Manus, do you want to start? Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Mohammed. <laughs> and uh, yeah, welcome to another installment of monthly monetization. And what we do with monthly monetization is every month we bring different e-commerce experts uh, to talk about different strategies on monetization, like how to monetize your e-commerce or your online marketplace platforms, your online retail platforms. Uh, we this is our i think fourth installment like yeah, fourth fifth actually oh fifth oh wow uh, it's been already five like uh yeah we're we're already like half halfway through you know like a year <laughs> that's amazing so uh and uh what we usually discuss during these uh, webinars is we talk about different strategies that e-commerce professionals can uh adopt in their day-to-day -day practice and to grow their revenue and you know like there are some uh, it's it's like a mind share where we you know like where if you are an e-commerce professional and you haven't thought of some things, uh, you know like you might learn some new ideas from other e-commerce professionals. And that was our goal to start monetization monthly and this webinar, our newsletter that goes out to over ten thousand uh, people. And uh, today we are discussing uh, about I think on our last uh, webinar we discussed about ad networks, ad platforms, and you know, like just touched upon how they work. And I think today we're discussing, going a little deeper into demand side platform and supply side platform on the ad networks and how uh, e-commerce advertisers, e-commerce professionals can uh, utilize uh, SSPs and DSPs in their, in their technology stack, in their marketing stack, in their advertising stack. So with that, I will let uh, Dr. Mohammed and Nishan take over and I'll disappear from the screen. And yeah, I'll let you guys take over from here. Thank, thank you, Manas. Um, yeah, so it's been, this is session five, been, been a fun ride. Um, quick nod to the past. So we started out with defining what e-commerce is, um, distinctions between retail and the different kinds of activities that uh, you would undertake in a e-commerce uh, engine. Uh, how to think about the various algorithmic components of it, uh, different kinds of analysis you might want to have, uh, different parts of the business, and how you can kind of make them smarter and more intelligent. Um, we talked about what are different approaches that you can use to get to profitability in an e-commerce business. Um, and we also talked about what are these uh, general uh, marketplaces and how concepts of e-commerce can can apply to them. Uh, and we talked about advertising, pricing, discounting, uh, targeting, among other things. Uh, we also uh, took a brief kind of pause and, and went into COVID uh, specific issues. Uh, we talked about supply chain and how uh, its disruption uh, uh, had an impact in the e-commerce industry, as well as how you can protect your business against these kinds of unexpected um, changes in the marketplace. Uh, then we we uh, talked about personal personalization and how that's tied to privacy and how you can orient yourselves in ways that your customers' data is protected with privacy, but you can still provide uh, the best experience for your um, for your customers. Um, next, we kind of took a brief foray into uh, the crypto world and talked about nfts and how uh there have been emerging marketplaces uh based off of nfts and where uh this industry is uh might go next with with elton shadula uh it was a fun conversation uh and finally we, uh we talked about supply side and demand side uh platforms uh as they enable uh the ads network um we we uh realized in the last session that we uh, only covered the surface of a lot of these topics and we, we could be going a lot deeper and that's what we'll be doing today. Uh, and in the next session, we'll expand this to 
multi-sided marketplace. So three, 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 three-sided marketplaces like Uber and DoorDash and many others that are kind of starting to come up now. Uh, and in some future session, we're also going to talk about the right infrastructure and systems to help power uh, these uh, models and engines uh, that have high uh, latency requirements as well as complex uh, uh, machine learning modeling. So uh, we'll cover those aspects in, in, in future sessions. And with that for now, um, I wanna hand it over to uh, Dr. Mohammed. Uh, tell us about SSPs and DSPs. Uh, great. <clears throat> Thank you, Sean, for the great summary of the way that we came and we once we started this series and the local one that we were talking about, DSP and SSP. Just before starting, I just, I have mentioned in my few lives, I just want to mention just briefly that we are, uh, uh, we are condemning this brutal suppression of protesters in Iran, they killed, I mean, lots of innocent people. And we are strongly condemning uh, these things. And last thing that we heard about the uh, Evin prison. Anyhow, so these are like very bad things, bad news, and I just want to may say some word about them. Now, uh, having said that, uh, let's go to SSPs and DSPs. So, uh, and actually the interesting thing is that these SSP and uh, DSPs are, it's not just some SSPs and uh, uh, DSPs. So uh, first, uh, let's uh, go and uh, define them. So the SSPs are supply side platform. Uh, before actually even talking about them, let's talk about publishers. So anyone who has a website, like for example, at, uh, like you may create a website and you have uh, some uh, traffic to your website, then you may ask, uh, there are several uh, uh, like platforms or uh, I will say uh, several companies, in particular uh, Google, uh, ads, you can go and you can uh, get uh, some slot designed for advertisement on your website. So that's a typical thing in that case. And it may take, <clears throat> it's not the case that uh, you are just uh, getting it easily. Interestingly, if you apply for your, to get the things for website, there is some check should be done by Google. Lots of them are done by computer. And that may take actually, uh, I don't know, no maybe six to nine months if everything goes well. It generally say that 90% of the people who are applying to get this slot for advertisement from uh, Google uh, gets rejected. So only 10% actually they can get it. And uh, Google checks the traffic of your website, make sure that there is a real content there. There is no, uh, just not copying some other website, et cetera. There are lots of checks that are done before they are given that and also they are checking uh, uh, lots of uh, things also from uh, like for example the traffic should be good you cannot just go and click yourself on that or your friends cannot go do that there are several things that you are doing <clears throat> anyhow after that you become a publisher so once you have these slots for advertisement and of course now you can get money out of it and there are two types of money that generally you can get it for display ads and this is we are mainly talking about display ads sometimes there are some videos also showed or some small videos there and here uh, you can get something for just a visit but i mean if the people just see it and they show something but generally that's very little money the main thing happens when the people click on that on the website what is the good thing is that, I mean, you may get money. Like I think it depends to your, uh, the area of your website. For example, if it is finance, you may get even up to something like uh, $2 per click. And this is still, I mean, maybe uh, half or two thirds of the money that the total money that the advertiser pays. The, other, the rest it goes to Google actually, the one who runs this and runs an auction. Good. So uh, that's somehow the general idea of getting the money from the advertisement. The good thing is that you get the money, as I mentioned. The bad thing is that uh, when somebody uh, clicks on it, they may go to other websites. So somehow there is, it's not everything positive. When they click on there, like this particular ad, they may essentially go to another website. And that's the thing that uh, some places like uh, Amazon or others, they are very careful about uh, 
or even like for example at over cycle so the people the people were very careful about putting such kind of advertisement display ads because uh, you may lose some traffic these people that they can potentially be in your website and buy from your website now they may go to other website and they may not come back to your website at least in this session anyhow so this is a then you become a publisher in that case so a particular thing for example cnn just go there there are uh, actually places that they are doing doing by uh, google adsense and they are advertising there even ebay actually has some small thing that actually is doing by uh, google adsense so in that case you become a publisher so that's the concept of publishers so publishers whenever a user is coming there then they are showing some advertising so this is now you became actually publisher but you are part of the uh, google network in some sense or google addicts network there are other things like some others like uh, cnn or others they actually they may do their own so they may not be part of the google uh, uh, google network of advertisement in some sense they are they have the slot that they want to do that uh, the like advertisement it might be the case that they may get some slot to google but still they have some other main slot for the, themselves that they want to do the advertising so uh, this person becomes a publisher now when person come any person comes to this website they are sending requests to all advertisements all advertisers who want to publish their ads in the slot so it can be this is the uh, slot that you have it by via google on your website or this is a website this is a slot that you have it you created your own uh, if you created your own you need to know more about ssps so what we do when this person is coming and everything is done uh, this is uh, generally when we are doing talking about a sponsor product we are talking about 20 to 30 milliseconds to show the ads here is a little bit more so end to end is something like 120 milliseconds because it is a more complex thing so when someone comes there then you need to decide which ad you want to show of course this is the very complicated things that happens behind the scenes uh, generally this publisher need to subscribe to some ssps these are the ones that are called a supply side platform so publishers are here. Now they are sending a request to multiple SSPs. These SSPs are the ones that connecting publishers to advertisers. Or actually, I will say connecting uh, publishers to DSPs or other SSPs. That's the one that makes it even more complicated. So there are several, I mean, SSPs here. Uh, I mean, some important one, for example, Rubicon or Google AdX, there are lots of them. Now. So if you become your own uh, publisher and you don't want to use Google um, ads, then you need to find some of these SSPs and talk with them. And there are like, I think, thousands of them, if not more of them. So you need to register to these guys that anytime an advertisement is coming, then you are sending the, the request to all of these SSPs at the same time. Now, this SSP is a complicated network because this SSP may also register to other SSPs. Mm -hmm. So you have essentially a mess of network here that all these SSPs and publishers, they are sending their request to multiple ones. And each of these SSP still, they may send their request to several multiple ones and so on and so forth. Because it's a very complicated thing that is coming. So one, one question to clarify here. Um, SSPs are sending these, uh, you know, your information to additional SSPs, or are they reaching uh, out to multiple DSPs? Yeah. Uh, that, yeah. So uh, uh, that's uh, that's an interesting point. That's an important one. They may send this one to several other SSPs, mm -hmm. as well as to some DSPs. So is this because uh, DSPs have relationships with certain SSPs and it's easier for SSPs to kind of send this information through other SSPs to target additional DSPs or how? Uh, great. So uh, the main idea here is the competition. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's that's actually interesting. Some of these websites, like even CNN, they might have been affiliated with Google or they, they are part of the Google network. At the same time, they are also running their own auction 
Mm-hmm. Or they might, or like this Amazon, essentially, they may run some of this. They are at, they are asking uh, from other. Um, they may send a request for advertisement to other uh, SSPs as well. Why the main idea is a competition? Because if you can get more essentially demand for these particular things, they That's generally it. nowadays they are running a first uh, price auction and they give right. it to the highest guy. So the main idea is that you want to find uh, like essentially the highest people uh, or the person who pays the highest. But I think it is not just the highest. You need to consider also the probability of killing. So the probability of killing times the uh, money that these guys are paying to you, that would be the expected benefit that you can get it. You want to give this one to the highest person. And to mm-hmm. do so, you try to get essentially as many customers as possible. Mm-hmm. Who are these customers that the publisher you will send to SSPs generally? SSPs, who are the customers? There are other SSPs mm-hmm. as well as uh, some DSPs. And the idea is this one. You are just sending this and you give them some ideas that, I mean, they need to, I mean, answer, I don't know, maybe in 120 milliseconds. Among those that you will get it on time because you need to essentially give this one and give some slack also time to give it to the next level, then you will decide among the requests that you got it within the time period that you are allowed to do that, you will get them, you will run a first price auction before it was second price auction, I think, but then now everyone is almost using display ads, they are using first price auction, and they, you are sending that to the next level. Mm-hmm. And the same process goes. So you may think about it. I mean, essentially, according to time, this goes there. There are more uh, and more uh, um, auctions are running. Several auctions may run such that one guy becomes the winner. Mm-hmm. And that winner is the one that it will be shown on your website. Got it. So, yeah, as, as, as the publisher, uh, in regards to kind of quality and the information that is sent, like is the information sent across SSPs and DSPs consistent? Um, and how do I ensure kind of quality in terms of the ads that do show up on, on my uh, great. Uh, so, so that's a good question. And uh, let me just, uh, I mean, add uh, the DSP role here, and then I will come back to your question. Right. Yeah. So, uh, uh, so now we talk about publishers and SSPs. This is a network that each of them talks with each other. And again, I didn't know actually that uh, this is like the, I mean, my time at Amazon in that sense actually helped me a lot to understand the, the way that is going there. It's, it's not written that much anywhere that it is like that. But, but this is something that, I mean, the people on the field, they know that. So these are the things that are there. And then they are connecting, talk with each other. And then at the end, it comes to DSPs. DSPs are some companies like, for example, it can be like Trade Desk is one of the famous ones, or Amazon DSP, or there are, or like for example, Google also has it. All of them, Google in some sense plays several roles here, both as a publisher, as a SSP, and a DSP. So you can have several essentially roles together. There is no issues there, but still, this is such a there is such a complicated network. DSPs are the one that they are talking with advertisers. So after the DSP, so these are publishers, SSPs, the complicated things, and then it comes to DSPs, uh, demand side platforms, and then advertisers. Demand side, essentially, they are they talk with advertisement generally based on the goal. Do you want to get the maximum click or you want to get maximum exposure or anything? That's based on that. They are optimizing their things and they are putting the bits into this complicated network of SSPs. So for advertisers, it is very important to know, I mean, what are the criteria that they want to get it because they are paying for each click. They mm-hmm. want to make sure that they get, maybe they want to get the maximum exposure. They want to, sometimes they want to pay minimum money. Sometimes like they want to get the cheapest one in the market or sometimes they actually, lots of them cares about the performance. And performance generally means, uh, I mean, ROAS or ROI, that you are spending this amount of money on advertisement, whether your sales goes up with the same thing or not. So this is, in that sense, it is very similar to a sponsored product uh, auctions that we talked before. Mm-hmm. But uh, coming back to your question, so that was about advertisers that dealing with, that they are essentially dealing with the uh, DSPs. The same also with publishers. These publishers generally either they are using Google or uh, essentially as the one, in that case, they don't see it and the Google optimize for itself and possibly for them. Mm-hmm. 
in terms of the the, peop, the website. And for example, if you are going and register for Google, you say that what type of content, you can get the automatic one that not everything is coming there. Uh, like everything that Google think it is good, it will come. Lots of people are doing that. Uh, the other thing that you will say that, okay, I don't want, for example, some, this is, uh, I don't want to get some kind of adult content or others coming to my website. You will also, you can also mention that. That's the one that if you are like a smaller website and you want to just deal with Google. There are other things like, for example, this is the, you may have, you may be a publisher and talk with Amazon because they are running the same thing. In that case, actually Amazon can also, so in some sense, Amazon runs the auctions for you, mm -hmm. but still you will tell them that any, uh, I don't want to just go with one SSD, like for example, just with Google Adex. I want to send it to several of them and get the best. Mm -hmm. And they will run for you. So you may have the software essentially to do it, or they may have essentially something. And by software, it's essentially these are some JavaScript that is run in your website that send it to different SSPs or different send it to just one of them. So, and then you can possibly the person who is running that either you as the website or some Amazon or Google or others that they are doing that. But you specifically mentioned if you are the larger scale, for example, CNN, you have lots of traffic, you will tell them, okay, I don't want to send it to just one. I want to send to lots of them and get a bit. And they will handle for you and some of the constraints that you will have it, they will satisfy. Generally, it is the case that, I mean, either you need to run it yourself, then you need to have the software to do that and make sure that some criteria are essentially there. Uh, otherwise, uh, you will hire some of these companies that they are giving this service for you such that you will do that. Does it make sense? Yeah, absolutely. So one, one point of note here, um, uh, this concept of header bidding. So it seems like with header bidding, what, what you can do as a publisher is um, leverage multiple SSPs uh, all at once. And the reason it's called header is you kind of make your JavaScript request at the header load time with a certain latency requirement, it's like 20 to 30 milliseconds. And, but, but you can fire it off to multiple uh, SSPs at yeah. the same time. And so this can give you potentially increased control or like more revenue. Um, but on the flip side, you're running, like you're asking each of these, uh, you know, SSP networks to run this auction on your behalf in parallel. And then, you know, in terms of what you're stating, there's potentially even a bigger kind of case of maybe duplicates and kind of like as, as an advertiser bidding on the same uh, publisher placement via multiple ad exchanges. Uh, but seems like people are seeing better performance recently with, um, with header, yeah. Uh, great. So I think, yeah, I think this uh, header activation exactly is this concept that you can send it to others. And is it not just publisher, but SSPs are doing that. Exactly. Now, what is the interesting thing here? So in some sense for publisher, this is the best. You are doing lots of demands. These are, and these are the duplicates. That's exactly the problem essentially. So you are making duplicate demands to lots of, I mean, SSPs, other SSPs. And they may go in the network of SSPs and even they multiply it, they may be exponentially because this SSP also send it to each other. Right. And so in some sense for like a publisher, that's actually a very good thing because you get the maximum exposure to get all possible advertisement. And at the end, you are showing one of them, the one that pays you the best money or like expected money in some uh -huh. sense because of the concept of probability probability of killing because generally as i mentioned if you just show it they don't get that much money uh, you will get the money like as a publisher if somebody clicks on that ad mm -hmm. so then the, the money that this guy pays times the probability of click is the one that uh, we care essentially so p click is sometimes they call it or probability of action but here the action in particular is a click we talked before about the uh, some other things like the sponsor product, there also the probability of purchase becomes important. But here it's mainly probability of killing. So you want to get the maximum expected money. So, and you don't care. You may send duplicates and uh, I mean, you may actually make the 
uh, you are flooding the network, but that's fine because at the end you want to just show one, the one that who pays the most. Yeah. So in that sense, it's actually very optimum for publishers. Mm -hmm. However, that's the thing that makes essentially the mess for SSPs and DSPs. Mm -hmm. The issue is that now this is the request that you will see, and then uh, you will get, uh, and this is, I, I think I uh, mentioned uh, before, it is uh, something like back in, I don't know, I think currently it's around uh, 100 billion uh, uh, display ad requests essentially created every hour. So mm. it's a huge number. And so these guys, then you will, uh, so just think about as a SSP so, uh, or DSPs. And again, SSPs are generally the one that they are not working with advertiser, with advertiser directly. They are just sending either to other DSPs, to other SSPs or to DSPs. Now, these guys, the DSP guys or the SSP guys, they got a request. And for them, actually, the life becomes much harder because they get a request and then they don't know this request may actually come <laughs> the same request that comes from lots of places. And the information that generally is there are not enough. So it is, and it is so far, it has been hard to identify. One of the issue is the, the, this concept of deduplicate. What's the meaning of deduplicate? It means that when there are several duplicates are coming, you just want to select one of them and essentially ignore others. Hmm. Why? Because if you are not careful, if you want to consider uh, each of these, uh, so now let me go to the DSPs and mention a little bit that what will happen in DSPs. So when a request is coming, especially for it is, SSPs might be doing a bit less of this, still they may do some of that. When it, uh, essentially a request comes to a DSP, the first thing is that it tries to find who is this user. Currently, I mean, still there are some cookies, so they can identify that. With the cookie-less world, they need to be more careful at this kind of unique uh, ID that we were talking. They may use that one to see who is the user. Generally, I mean, a good fraction, maybe, I don't know, one third of the whole things. Mm -hmm. It's just, if you don't know the user, they don't want, you don't want to put any bits there. Then, even if you know the users, so you may think, oh, these are the users, so... Uh, so in some sense, this advertisement, they, they understand that from this, I mean, because you know what is the address of that, that you know that. Yeah. From that, you want to see, and also you get some cookies from there. So you want to see whether this user at this particular website is a known user or not. Being a known user or not is very important. Like even half of the time is an unknown user, we can just get rid of it. Because is that, the, the is people don't want to put this. Or so what was that? is that for performance reasons or why? Exactly. So, uh, I mean, uh, so... Uh, uh, what is the idea is that uh, uh, this is the same thing also for you. As a DSP, you want to show the ad, uh, you want to essentially bid for a slots that maximize the performance of your customers who are the advertisers. So here, generally, you want to maximize their ROA. Sometimes you want to get the maximum exposure. But for that, it is important that you will make sure, and it is also important as a DSP, so when do you get the money? You will get some service fee for any advertisement that you are essentially showing. So what is the general idea? This, so the advertisers pay some money and mm -hmm. expect to get some ROAS, some mm -hmm. essentially a return of money. What is, what is ROAS? Yeah. So it, generally you are considering how much you are spending on the, how much you are doing the sale over the advertisement money that you are so how much, how much sale you're generating based on this ad spend? It would be based, based, I mean, this or general, like some of the sales based on some of the ads that you have to do this campaign. Essentially. Great. So when you do this one, then you essentially, so that's the performance for them. Now, whenever something, so you want to make, uh, as a DSP, you want to make sure that the, your advertisers are happy. Because these are the customers. If they are not happy, if they don't see good ROAS, they just spend the money, but not much sale happening, then they may go with another DSP and they may not fall with. So that you want to make them happy. At the same time, when do we get the money? So this money that this advertiser pays, part of that goes to the publisher. Mm -hmm. Part of that goes to different SSPs, which are in the middle. And part of that goes to the DSP. So in some sense, uh, this money advertisement pays, it just divided between several, between publishers, SSPs, and DSPs. Mm -hmm. So you really want to make sure that these uh, uh, two things happen. First, your bid wins, because if it does not win, 
you don't pay anything. Not only you don't pay anything, actually you lose money because you are doing per each of these requests, which their number is huge. You are doing some computation and this computation can be quite huge. Actually, you may, I mean, like a, I don't know, a medium sized DSP can easily pay a few millions, essentially, a few million uh, of dollar per month, essentially, just for computations. Because these are like all of these things that you are doing is, and also, for example, you want to get the idea of this guy, or like in the cookie list world, you want to get some ideas from this. All of them, you need to pay to these guys for each of these requests to APIs. So, uh, so you pay for them. You really want to make sure that this one that you are doing, the compute cost and all, all other costs that are associated with that is, a uh, essentially you can win such that you can compensate that and even you can get some profit. And this is one other thing that the DSP, actually getting money from DSP is hard. So like for example, the among DSPs or SSPs, it is uh, hard to get money because uh, the money, uh, the number of requests are so huge that the compute cost and other costs that you may pay, easily you may lose money actually to run this business. And this is true essentially for Google, Amazon, or TradeDesk. TradeDesk actually is one of the best in that things that actually has done very good performance. And even its stock shares actually went quite a bit up for this mm -hmm. thing. But generally they, it is known that the DSP comparing, for example, to a sponsor product, a sponsor product gets much better money return comparing to a display advertising. Anyhow, so now this is the money. So you want to make sure that this gets essentially uh, accepted. This bit that you are putting there, you want to make sure that it is accepted. Now, uh, the issue is that if there are several duplicates are coming to you, you need to figure it out whether, the, I mean, whether these are the duplicates because it may go through the different SSPs and you don't know whether these are the same things that are coming through that or maybe this is a different thing. So that's another important thing. Because uh, like when uh, one user comes to a website, lots of these, I mean, places, I mean, uh, that, for example, even in Google, if you want to put some advertisement, it asks whether you want to put it one advertisement or two advertisements, or maybe actually you can do more. Mm -hmm. So it might be the case that actually one page, which might be an important page, like CNN page, it sends its fires of, I don't know, 10 advertisements at the same time advertisement requests at the same time. Yes. These guys are going essentially through different SSPs. And again, you don't have any information. Generally, they don't say even where in the page mm -hmm. is there. So it might be just one essentially request that goes through different paths, or it might be like 10 requests that are coming at different paths and multiply. So you are getting a set of requests and the, one of the main thing as a DSP that you need to re resolve is that to which one you should, I mean, even uh, you want, so I will say even more, like this request is coming. This is also very important as a DSP that you will kill the requests that you don't want to bid on them. Mm -hmm. Because as I mentioned, as, as much as these bids are coming into your system, it essentially uh, consumes your resources and you need to pay for that. Mm -hmm. So in some sense, it is very important that this huge number of big requests that are coming, you need to kill them as soon as possible. Mm -hmm. and by kill them, it means that you want to make sure those that they don't have high performance or those that they are duplicates and others, that should be killed. Because as long as they are coming into your system, then you need to process them. Right. You may, for example, if there are, uh, I don't know, 10 uh, duplicates are coming to your thing. For each of them, you want to see who is the user. It means that you need to pay 10 essentially amount uh, API costs to other websites or other services, SaaS things that they are providing the user identification for. So if you know that this is a duplicate and you just send one of them, so you only pay one essentially to that service versus 10 to that service. And also, furthermore, I mean, you want to, when they come more into the system, then you are, you may do some more machine learning thing. So you will get, say, for example, uh, you know, who is this user? But that's just the beginning that you need to pay to get it. After that, you need to decide again, now based on the, for example, the URL of that website, several, what is the country of this website, which is the time of the hour, uh, and what is the possible size? Sometimes they say, what is the size of this? Based on that, you want to say which one you want to even put a bid on it. Mm -hmm. Because you don't want to put bid on everything because it's very costly again. 
And for them actually to do that, you need to do some machine learning techniques. So uh, that's, I mean, these are actually, these are very complicated uh, algorithms that, that become actually quite interesting also from the algorithmic point of view and ML point of view that now this user, so you know that half of this request that they came to the DSP, uh, uh, like half of them just essentially gone because this is some unidentified user. As I mentioned, if it is unidentified user, that's a very good thing that don't <laughs> bid on that one. Because again, there are actually some websites they say maybe for a fraction of them, this is this kind of a bandit problem that this is exploration versus exploitation that you may want to actually maybe try a little bit of them because possibly they can give you more things in the future, but lots of them probably you don't want to do that. You try to go and just use the exploitation phase instead of exploration. You may do, it, I don't know, epsilon greedy or something like this to try a little bit of them. But there must, uh, lots of them will get rejected. Now among these guys, among the remaining guys, you may say it's still, you may remove essentially, I don't know, half of it, for example. Mm -hmm. Because of, uh, why? Because you know that uh, uh, from the, past history that you had it, you know that these guys, I mean, the country is not, I mean, the best option for you or you know, the location, geolocation, the time of the day. For example, you don't want to say an advertisement of a, like a restaurant, like, I don't know, in the morning, maybe if it is just for lunch or like, I don't know, after the lunch. Yeah. Right. So, uh, so uh, these are the things that you need to also do that. And this is the part that you need to talk about how you want to, based on different criteria that you have, you want to say which ones you should consider that, mm -hmm. uh, even for bidding. And then at the end, it is like that, maybe one fourth of them or one fifth of all these requests, they will go actually for even further or deep dive things that now you try to uh, match them with the customers that you have nice. by advertising advertiser that you have. Then you need to consider the, because now these are say valid requests in some sense. These are reasonable requests. Then you want to see whether they are matching with the request of your advertisers or not. That's actually you are running another auction. So this is the auction that you are running. Is this successful bids? I mean, few successful bids, not that few. I mean, like say one fifth of the <laughs> demand that came. You run some auctions again among your advertisers. Mm -hmm. Each advertiser, this is an online advertisement, and they have some certain budget, you will run an auction, who wants this request the best? That's the typical role that a DSP is doing. In some sense, SSP is doing very similar things. The only thing is that instead of uh, this, uh, it, it might be simpler in the sense that they are not dealing with uh, advertisers, they are just talking with DSPs. And they just get these bits from the DSPs. You can think about actually SSPs are more like a router. But the router generally, when something is come, they just send to another one more person. Here, they are actually flooding the network because the maximization. So one, one question on this: um, Where does the transaction uh, take place? Is this so? When is the auction officially closed? Is it when the SSP accepts? A particular uh, great. So, uh, so, so that's actually a very good question. So as I mentioned, so this is like again, this one, these are the somehow the publishers, then they come the SSPs, which are routers, but in some sense, not very, uh, like a flooding router. Then comes to DSPs. So then at the DSP, it needs to go through several, uh, essentially a funnel, it needs to go several steps, which it becomes a valid request. Mm -hmm. And then this valid request at this time, then you need to decide which advertiser should get it. We are running an auction. But at this point, nothing is certain. So this guy that we have the winner now, now this winner, it goes to the next step, to the next SSP, whether it wins or not. If it wins, go to the next SSP, whether it wins that auction or not. So there are, you see how many auctions we are running. Then you will go at the end to the publisher one, publisher auction. If at that time it essentially gets, uh, wins the auction, that would be the final, things that will be shown. And in that case, that again comes back, some message passing is coming back in some sense from that publisher to the SSP that sent it to run right. that SSP to previous one and others that yes, your advertisement actually got this thing. At that time, at that time only you can charge the advertiser. 
Not before that. At so, least, I mean, that's a valid thing. I mean, if there is something, some bug in the system, you charge it, you can still charge it, but you need to be very careful that you don't want to charge an advertiser if really the click does not happen. And actually, there's more connection. So this guy, even if a click happens, also lets you know that a click happens. So sometimes you can do that to, through that publisher can let you know, or sometimes it is something called pixel. That again, the work might be a bit, uh, this is the, some pixel that you are putting in your creative, ad creative, it is some kind of JavaScript. In some sense, it is not just a, a image, but in some sense, it's some JavaScript that you are sending to them. And that JavaScript, if you have your advertisement there, that pixel or that program can actually see whether the mouse hovers over it or clicks on it. And if it happens directly, let you know the DSP that actually the click happened. Uh, even the, SS, the right. like, publisher may let you know through this network, but this might be much easier or sometimes more reliable way of seeing that actually, because when the, your ad creative got essentially won the auction and becomes the actual things, at that time you have the power because in some sense you are running some JavaScript on some front end. And there you can see whether a click happens, whether a mouse power happens or anything else. And these are the information that actually Google is doing that. Several others are doing this right. one. And uh, they, they are providing this one. Again, Google and the DSP provide this information for you. So, then it, this one that sends to you. And then at that time, you can actually say, OK, something happened, and I can charge the advertiser. And the important thing is that if the advertiser actually if uh, if this does not win because of any reason and the click does not happen, all these costs that you have incurred by SSPs mm -hmm. or the, uh, so I hear by SSPs also the S SSPs on the past, they, each of them get part of this cake essentially, the money that advertisement paid. So each of them gets some part of it. This happens only if this guy wins and a click happens generally. Otherwise nobody gets anything. So in some sense, all of these computations will go essentially to nowhere. In that sense, actually, it's very similar to this uh, type of Bitcoin or uh, Ethereum, uh, essentially, mining that now in the, they have changed actually the current day of Ethereum. I still, I mean, this is proof of stake versus proof of work that we talk in the, in the discussion in the Web3. But this is also or like, consider like Bitcoin for now. The Bitcoin, you know that lots of people, they try to get the money, but only one guy actually wins, the person who is doing the first time. And all others, the same thing here. Also, in some sense, only the first guy, the first the guy that was the most appropriate for this one, that gets the money and through the past, all others, including lots of computation. Either the money that you paid, for example, through API, maybe a small amount of money, but because there are 60, I don't know, 100 billion, uh, uh, like the request per hour, it means that you can easily pay a lot of money to just identifying the user part because you are using some third party to do that. And that actually is, the cost might be much more than the money that you will get as some kind of, uh, I mean, the, this part of the cake that you will get it from the advertiser. So you need to be very careful. In some sense, maybe SSPs are easier. They don't pay this part to the user part. They just pass it along, essentially. But DSPs especially need to be very careful about it uh, to make sure that nothing bad. Uh, like essentially, like overall, they are not losing money instead of gaining money. Because so, this is a very tricky business and complicated business. From, from the publisher perspective, um, do is it often the case that they implement uh so it sounds like there has to be some information that comes from the publisher that says okay i've accepted this most of the time it's the pixel like when the tracking pixel registers a click that's when we know to close uh or kind of pay uh uh sorry charge charge the advertiser for this are there like many cases where publishers implement their own logic in terms of how they want to, um, you know, affect the winning? So like if we go to the CNN homepage example, let's say the homepage banner is something really important for CNN and they want to have additional quality controls on top of uh, the ad that comes back. Uh, are there cases where uh, that is implemented? Yes, so uh, that's actually a very good question. One of the one of the main problem is the DSPs. I, I, this is again, I mean, this is the one that it is mind <laughs> uh, mind blowing actually when you think about it. 
This is the huge, um, actually, computation is going. And again, I will compare this one, actually, I think, rightly with this kind of Bitcoin. Since we say mm -hmm. that like, Bitcoin is generally is maybe not the best for the environment because you are uh, spending a lot of energy for nothing, essentially. But uh, here, the same thing happens also. So the, one of the issues that are very, this guy, this system currently is very inefficient. Some of them, like a Google Adex, maybe constitutes, I don't know, maybe... 30% of all the things that are doing as SSP is going to Google addicts, but there are Rubicon and there's uh, one of the uh, issues about this one is that there is no single language actually. So when it, this is generally is the case that you need to do some, so when you go and talk with some SSP, like as a DSP or as a publisher, you need to see what is the language that they have and either you provide through that language or use their language when you communicate with them. And this might be, there is no a standard, at least, I mean, as far as I know so far, between these guys. This is one of the, the things that makes the whole thing very inefficient. So then you need to even, you, you, this, this particular publisher, you want to work and you say with CNN, you need to see what are the exact rules that they have it, when do they give you the money, and then you adopt it according to that. That's exactly the part of it that, for example, I mean, like DSPs, they try to increase the SSPs they go and have the sign with SSP. At the same time, this is also another thing. This is something called dynamic setting that you actually may want to go and uh, disc uh, essentially discontinue your things with some SSPs. So th this is like not all that, because SSPs that I mentioned, these are some kind of routers that they try to send as many as possible. For right. them is the best to get the maximum demand. But as a DSP is not necessarily again the best for you. You don't uh, want to bring in you know that multiple if, SSPs. Yeah. So if you know that this DSP actually is the one that just gives you that this SSP gives you the demand to you, but these are low quality demand. Mm -hmm. uh, and the general idea essentially of low quality demand is that whether you are generally bidding on those things or not. If you get, I mean, some from some SSPs. And of course, if there is no bug in your system and you don't naturally, you don't beat on those SSP, after some time, you may actually go and discontinue your registration with that SSP. Because that SSP just brings you some uh, essentially cost for you without much benefit. So this is this concept of cost benefit. You not only do it for each bid request, but you may want to do it as a whole with some SSPs. You always want to find good SSPs that they provide better things for you. And you want to remove those that they are not giving the best quality for you. So that's another thing, like as a DSP, actually, you need to deal with. I will say this is the, probably the same issue also with SSPs. Like the SSPs may want to do the similar thing. They don't want to just, because there is a cost for them as well. So in some sense, like, again, everyone try to find that one gold, or gold coin in some sense, which is the path that they can get the advertisement, get some part of it, and that's it essentially. Mm -hmm. And uh, but it is not that easy because there are lots of guys. They are all of them essentially some huge game is going there. Everyone try to maximize their profit, uh, and uh, like especially DSPs, they need to also satisfy the advertisement things. Publishers, in some sense, because of this flooding, publishers may get the best things because they can get the maximum exposure. And mm -hmm. for them, the best one who wins, that's the best thing that is for them yeah. and expected things for them. And uh, yeah, I'm seeing there are some kind of open source libraries for header, uh, uh, yeah, header um, auctions as well that you can kind of implement and then like change the, the logic for how you declare the winner, essentially. But that this is probably an effort for consolidation uh, across these varied kind of approaches. Yeah, so in some sense, this is this kind of unique ID thing that we were discussing. I think the trade desk was doing that to try to have a unique ID for advertising. Like each person by email, you have a user, you have a, you are a unique ID that they can show some advertisement to you, and you have some control over that, etc. That's a, something instead of the if in the cookie-less world you want to use it. The issue is that these are different players, and not all of them have the same incentive to have the same language. Because if you have the same language, you may win some part of the thing. It's not clear that you will because some other might have a higher quality and you will win it. It might be better that at random you. So, so this is the whole idea: is that you want to do some computation less computations and get the maximum profit out of it. You may just flood it. That's exactly the reason for flooding. Get it the maximum that you can. And uh, I mean, so uh, 
and this do it i mean doing some kind of random for example epsilon greedy type of investigation and select something you try to do as random as possible such that you can get the money but mm -hmm. if there are more essentially a structure there better language there you as a company who is doing that you may not get the best money out of it mm -hmm. and that's also i mean another interesting thing as i mentioned so some particular thing that is very important for example these are some of them that potentially can be fixed much easier if everyone goes according to the law that you define but there is no such law so mm -hmm. uh, one of the most horrible thing is that uh, as i mentioned before also that like one website generates lots of uh, request and you don't know whether these are the same request or not some of this i mean identification you may give actually different you may if you generate several slots in a website you may get different ids to each of them and these ids can be passed through ssvs the only issue that maybe some ssv they don't pass even these things but maybe you want to cut them essentially at some point but uh, if if this id actually goes there at least like for a dsp when a request is coming you can compare whether these are the du uh, duplicate of the same request or these are the two things from the uh, from the same website that would be very helpful for this company for this essentially dsps and they can yeah. say even for uh, ssps that they don't want to game the system if they want to do the uh, good player that might be good for them as well and yeah and i think i mean these are like there are like lots of complicated algorithms that you may want to use it for as a dsp uh, some of them you may want to use more more based on the history that you want to do it but the history the issue that is advertisements are very picky so this is like essentially a stock market you may get lots of advertisement at some point and some much less essentially these are due to lots of factors essentially so it's not the case that at all that you will get the same type of advertisement you will get it it changes quite rapidly even within a minute actually changes so in that case the issue of if you want to just use history the history may not be the best things because uh, like yesterday does not say anything for you even a minute ago does not tell you something about now and so that's a good way if you want to just use the history you may have less of these issues for example in the sponsor product auctions that we discussed because you you know your customers better but yes. here in this play is like much wilder things essentially and you know some ssp may go bad and send some requests and change the whole thing lots of things bad things can happen and so the issue is that what type of algorithm yet you need to do it at the same time these are the algorithms that should be very i mean at the same time it should be very deep to catch these issues yeah. or uh, and at the same time they should be very uh, uh past yeah. algorithms and that they don't take that much running time because if you want to do it for each of these people requests, it would be huge thing. These are the things that actually we will be very happy. I mean, if they we have done actually this type of things in the past, if the people are interested on in those type of things, we will be happy essentially to help them for what type of algorithm that we can design. These are like very smart algorithm and smart and fast algorithm that we can design for these purposes. And I think this is a actually nice area and. Uh, yeah, these are some of the things that we have implemented uh, on some of them, and what a huge, essentially, uh, ROAS performance happened, essentially, as a DSP or sometimes SSPs or publishers. Uh, yeah, so these are the, I think, some of the summary of these things. So do you have uh, do we, any other question you think that? No, thank you. Should that, answer? That, that summarizes things really well. Maybe one question. Um, um, as, as a publisher, what, what, what can you do? uh one outside of you know i like leveraging the right kind of platforms what are what are measurements that you should have in place how should you approach your integrations with one or or multiple ssps uh, i think probably the best thing for a publisher is to uh, this is like the thing that currently is doing that like almost all uh, apis they have some field that these are the fields these are called data or additional data that you can pass on that i think that would be the best for publishers to have some kind of IDs for different requests that they are providing, such that anyone who gets it, because that's surely, I mean, that is totally understandable that the publisher wants to send it to several SSPs to get maximum exposure. Mm -hmm. But if you are a publisher that you are providing, I mean, several ad requests at the same time for different slides on the page, it might, it would be very good if you can provide this information 
that I mean, what is the idea of this one? When it's generated, all of them actually can be encoded in this additional data that is like the, the, this uh, things that the uh, request that you are sending to SSPs and others. If they are encoded and the, possibly the SSPs and publishers, etc., they can all of them they can see that because it might be the case that you will get even some request and you are not sure whether that. Ad, ad advertisement auction on the top level has already run or not yet. So mm -hmm. these are some of the information that if you run it, you give the IDs, unique IDs, and give some kind of, uh, like for example, the time and any such kind of information that you can encode it and pass along, that would be very helpful. I think to make the whole system more efficient and mm -hmm. you as a publisher actually get it even better things because mm -hmm. you because you don't want that also when you send to lots of these guys, your uh, request will cut because of any reason, because of any machine learning algorithm understand it is duplicate, which is not really a duplicate. You are sending two different requests. So you really want to get double essentially the size of advertisement and you may not get it. So essentially uh, tag it with enough information that uh, if you're a good actor, you are classified as a good actor and are not the one of the, you know, uh, sets that are eliminated in, in this process for efficiency on the bid side. Exactly. And I think that would be the thing. So again, so the issue that you may send to SSPs and the SSPs, SSPs may cut this information. But in, if there are, I mean, again, as you mentioned, the good actors versus malicious actor or bad actors here, the good actors in general, if they are playing according to the laws, they can actually get more exposure to the DSPs and advertisers. And those that they don't provide this information in a long run, actually, they will be out of the business because they don't provide this one. It means that there is something wrong with them. And uh, the people, again, the publisher may not send it to them or more importantly, DSPs may not register with them. So they just cut them out. And if you, you are an SSP, you cannot just do that. The people essentially will be dead. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. This was, you know, I'm, I'm really glad we we're able to do a deep dive on this topic. Uh, we've been building up to enough context for this conversation for a long time. Um, next time we'll dive into uh, multifaceted, multi-sided marketplaces and how things might be different on that side. Um, anything else you'd like to add before? Yeah I, think, yeah, I think that was a great thing that we had. This is some of the things that I wanted to mention because it was, uh, I mean, like, I don't know, maybe four or five years ago, I was thinking that I know something about advertisement, but the fact that I didn't, I, I mean, after knowing this thing that is happening and how complicated is the network, I, I knew I feel I didn't know anything about it. <laughs> and this is one of the most complicated things that happens all in real time, lots of machine learning, and computations is happening here. I think that's even more advanced at Bitcoin because also machine learning happens, not just computations here. Right. And some people win essentially a little bit. It's very similar to that thing. And, uh, but here in some sense, maybe that for a business of actually doing advertisement, you are uh, you have some kind of economic growth because you have more advertisements, et cetera. So it is for a good uh, purpose, but still lots of computation that may happen without much success and if you can make it more uh, this is again this concept of proof of stake versus proof of uh, work that happened to just make it more efficient uh, the way that they are doing of course you are losing some uh, in some respects when the ethereum you can only do it proof of stake now not everyone can get money only the people had a good chunk of money essentially can make more money but at the same time this is might be needed because you don't want to do lots of computations and these computations are costly for the whole planet Mm -hmm. I don't know, global warming or other and other stuff. Thank you. Thank you so much. Manas. Yeah, uh, it's about time. It's 11 o'clock uh, and it was an exciting conversation. Thank you so much, Dr. Mohammed Nishan. Uh, and any last thoughts before we wrap this up? Um, yeah, reach out to us if you know you want more information. Any of these conversations are relevant to to what you're doing in your industry, or uh, just want to pick our brains on things or collaborate more. Yeah, that would be great to have it. I mean, you can just send it to me and just search my Hajakai uh, or Nishan. You can you can find our LinkedIn, and you can just my Gmail is my last name at gmail.com, so we can easily do that. Yeah. And what was your Gmail address, Nishan? Yeah, nishansuvedi at gmail.com. First name, last name at gmail.com. First name, last name at gmail.com. Yeah, uh, great. So, 
Yeah, one last announcement. Uh, thank you so much. And, you know, like if you missed our uh, live webinar, we have this recorded both uh, on LinkedIn, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, and various other platforms. And if you are subscribed to our newsletter, we will uh, send a follow-up with a recorded video, link to a recorded video so that you can uh, check this video out. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can just reach out to me or one of the uh, moderators, one of the, you know, like, uh, and you know, we'll be happy to answer any questions. Uh, yeah, so all of them is, I mean, the easiest way is to just go to uh, YouTube and search uh, my last name, Haji Agai, that you will find all of these potentials of e-commerce studies along other things. You can have all of them. I think that's a good way to find them. And I think that would be, uh, we try to actually give, I think this is like the one that I consider it more as the education. These are some of the things that you may not hear in other things, I mean, other uh, uh, webinars or something, but we are going dive deep into this such that these are some useful information for the people to know about how is it going inside these businesses and possibly help them if they have such a need in these areas. Perfect. Yeah. And thank you so much. And we will catch you on our November's monthly monetization. And I will send a, I'll send out a follow-up email uh, to all the subscribers and also update on LinkedIn when, you know, like a couple of days before our next webinar. Great. Right. Perfect. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, everyone. And bye. Thanks. And have a great day. Bye. bye.